Yeah, we were in the same CB outfit. Uh huh. I suppose you've come to talk about your son, the senator. No, I didn't. I'm not too concerned about him. He'll take care of himself. But I've been following your editorials very closely. Now, I know it's the duty of a newspaper to print the news. And of course, companies like Metro, Tri State, and McFarlane Motors, they are news. Of course, they are. Especially their profits. That's right. And I'm interested in profits, both for myself and the customer. My main reason for coming here was to see if I could perhaps interest you in printing something about a pet theory I have. I call it profits to the customer. What do you mean? Well, as I say, it's my own private little pet theory. It's very simple, not very complicated. You see, I'm not an economist. I'm just a businessman. I have to make a profit to stay in business. Sure, we all know that. I make a profit on every electric motor I sell. But the customer must make a larger profit. Because if he doesn't, he won't buy my motors and I'm out of business. The customer must make a profit. That's right. Would you like to try my mixture? Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, the customer must make a profit. For example, you have some typesetting machines out there. The manufacturer who sold them made a profit on them. But your paper would never have bought them in the first place if they couldn't deliver something beyond their original cost. They must continue to work for your paper to be worth more to you than you paid for them. As a customer, that's your profit. My profit? Yes, you sell your newspaper to a man for five cents. He gets news, advertisements, and all kinds of information for his home and business. He gets service beyond the value of his five cents. As a customer, that's his profit. It's the same story with everything else. The light bulb, the refrigerator, the telephone. For this, we pay a few dollars a month. Our profits are enormous in steps alone. And in case of an emergency, its value can't be estimated. That's a different slant from what we've been printing. As you say, that's just a theory. But you can't deny that you are big business. In your editorials, you've been insisting that because a thing is big, it's bad. It takes bigness to do big things. Our industries turned out equipment for our armed forces in a remarkably short space of time. It was a big job and it was well done. Helped us to win the war and preserve our country. That's what American industry with its bigness was able to accomplish. Was that bad, Blake? The last 50 years, we've come a long way. Used to take a week to get a letter across the United States. Now we do it in one day. The difference in time alone could affect the happiness of a family. Might even mean a matter of life and death. In my time, I've seen advances in industry that have added 20 years to the average span of life. My father died in the old country at the age of 40, an old man. His work was absolute drudgery, slavery, on his own farm from 5 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night. But because I live in America, I feel like a young man, and I'll be 65 in April. Mr. McFarlane, your tobacco makes mighty fine smoking. Why are you telling me all this? Well, I thought perhaps you might be interested in both sides of this profit question. Print something else for a change. Mr. McFarland, I don't tell you how to run your plant, so please don't tell me how to run my paper. I'll print my own conception of business profits. Good day, sir. Well, I just thought I'd come in and talk which I have. Remember, Blake, when this country was first discovered, there was nothing here. Now look around you. Everything you see is profits. Our transportation, communication, household appliances, medical equipment. Notice them sometime, Blake. They're the real profits. Mm -hmm. 